So there's not a lot of stuff that I would line up for. Harami is one of them. Would you stand in line for two hours to imbibe in some quality ramen? That's what I did one week after the opening of Ipuda Berkeley as the popular Japanese ramen chain finally makes its way to the west coast. It's something I'm actually a bit embarrassed to admit. Heaven knows how many puzzled looks of pity I and others in line got from folks who asked what the old line was about and realized it was for ramen, as opposed to say bottled water or gas. <laughs> you know the kind of things you have to legitimately line up for out of need during a natural disaster. In my case, I've actually been to Ipudo's first US branch in New York, so this isn't one of those times where I've just got to see what the big deal is about. I've also been to a plethora of ramenya or ramen shops across Japan, and the Bay Area also has its share of ramen spots these days that are actually good without the need to stand in line for two hours. All that being said, I decided to go through with lining up because A, I had good company who never tried Ipudo before, and B, I already paid $7 on the parking meter. <laughs> We also had several hours to kill before the Bay Area Peace Lantern Ceremony, so I thought, why the heck, why not? Good company, by the way, is essential when you find yourself in a line that, at one point, totaled about 60 to 70 people deep. In fact, company was a common theme at this line, which boasted a pretty diverse group that included students, couples, anime lovers, of course, and older folks. Ramen, after all, is a democratic dish meant to be enjoyed by everybody. You know the place must be worth lining up for when you've got a young lady in crutches willing to stand in line for a couple of hours. If that doesn't show dedication to the shrine of ramenology, I don't know what does. So why all the fuss about Ipudo? The original Ipudo opened more than 30 years ago in 1985 as a 300 square foot ramen shop in Hakata, Fukuoka, Japan. Fukuoka, by the way, is an area known for edible delicacies such as mentaiko, mochinabe, and tonkatsu ramen, a type of ramen that features a creamy pork-based broth. Ipudo founder Shigemi Kawahara would eventually gain notoriety by winning TV Tokyo's TV Champion Ramen Chef title three times in the 1990s, as well as TBS's Ramen King competition in 2005. Today, Ipudo is a growing ramen chain with locations around the world, including the Ipudo Berkeley branch featured in this video. Anyway, enough rambling, here are my thoughts on this ramen shop. First, let's look at the setting. Ipudo Berkeley definitely looks a lot more high-end than your typical Japanese ramen shop. Part of the charm of visiting a traditional ramen place for me in Japan is its salt-of-the-earth, everyman quality. That typically entails a cramped space where diners place an order at a machine by the entrance, then crowd around a counter and watch the shop's ramen master go to work. Some shops might even have extra space for table seating but still look like mom-and-pop operations. Ipudo, on the other hand, looks like an upscale restaurant. Its interior looks modern, sleek, and clean and also exudes a hipster vibe. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way, as Japan has its share of modern-looking ramen shops as well. It's just, well, different from the traditional ramen norm. Another difference is how ramen is enjoyed, which is a reflection of US ramen shops' western clientele. In Japan, the loud slurping of diners rings dominantly in the air of a busy ramen ya, a sign that the customers are enjoying the food. At Ipudo Berkeley, the slurping is more reserved overall, with the exception of some hardcore ramen foodies who have no qualms of enjoying the piping hot noodles the same way they do in the land of the rising sun. Once again, it's not good or bad, just different. Now let's look at the food. Normally I just order ramen and chicken karage when I eat at a ramen shop. This time, however, I decided to sample a larger portion of the menu, given how long I waited in line and the likelihood that I won't be back again for a very, 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 very long time unless Ipudo Berkeley's line gets much shorter. When I lined up in New York, for example, the wait was only 30 minutes. Hopefully the lines eventually shorten at Ipudo Berkeley as well once it's been open for some time. This is Ipudo's take on Japan's version of Chinese-style marinated fried chicken tenders. Ipudo's karage features a crispy amber crust and juicy interior that's served with a lemon wedge, side of seasoning, and a salad. I love karage and have a tendency to actually add it to my ramen as an extra piece of protein. Now, I've tasted a lot of karage over the years and my favorite continues to be the super garlicky version that a Japanese friend's mom used to make. Ipudo's karage didn't quite have the flavor punch of that one, but I would still rate it as above average. This take on Chinese-style steamed buns that you typically see served with Peking duck is arguably the best appetizer in Ipudo's starter menu. You have your pick of three fillings, 
pork, chicken, and vegetables, which are then served with mayonnaise and a sweet and spicy sauce. I ordered the chicken version and enjoyed its flavor and nice mix of textures. If you can order only one starter, I recommend ordering this one. One of the culinary pleasures of Japan for me is eating unagi-don or unadon, a simple yet delicious dish of rice and grilled eel flavored with a sweet teriyaki-style sauce. My favorite take on this type of dish comes from a restaurant in Japan that's more than 100 years old and located near Atsuta Shrine. That would be Horaiken, which serves a divine version of Nagoya's famous Hitsumabushi, a kicked-up version of the traditional grilled eel on rice combo with extra toppings and a complimentary soup that you can mix in later. Ipudo Tsunagi rice is a basic unadon that's simpler than Hitsumabushi. That being said, it still tastes quite good and is affordable to boot. I mean, $6 for an unadon with unagi or eel-flavored rice topped with shredded egg, nori, and a grilled eel marinated in sweet sauce is a pretty good deal. A bolder take on the more traditional Shiromar classic, this one comes with a redder color instead of the original smoky white broth thanks to the addition of Ipudo's umami dama miso paste, as well as extra punch from the fragrant garlic oil. In addition to the regular toppings of pork belly chashu, bean sprouts, sesame kikuragi mushrooms, and scallions, the tamago option adds soft boiled and seasoned onsen or hot spring style egg for an extra $2. For noodles, you have your choice of yawa or soft, futsu or regular, kata or firm, and barikata or extra firm. I recommend kata for an al dente texture that holds up and doesn't get soggy right away, even after being submerged in soup for a long time, but isn't so hard that it feels like you're chewing on soft sticks the first time. <laughs> Compared to the classic shiromaru, which is what I ordered when I ate at Yakudo in New York, the akamaru definitely layers in a lot more flavor. The miso gives the savory broth an extra depth of flavor, but not to the point where the miso overpowers everything like you sometimes see in other ramen places. The garlic oil also adds a pleasant scent and taste to the dish. The result is a richer soup that I actually prefer over the simpler shiromaru. Overall, the akamaru gets two thumbs up from me. Ipudo also has a shoyu or soy sauce based ramen, but I haven't tried that one yet. As my female Japanese friends like to say, human beings have an extra stomach for dessert. After seeing this on the menu, I just had to try it. Ipudo's tiramisu doesn't have any lady fingers and instead features a white custard style body with a light creamy taste and soft texture that reminds me of onion dofu. My issue with this dish is its overly generous sprinkling of green tea powder, which just kills the nice delicate flavor of the tiramisu over time as you eat more of the dessert. I mean, I love green tea, but this one's overkill. I love Kurogoma ice cream, which is flavored with black sesame seeds. Whenever I see it on the menu, I will almost always order it. That's because I've eaten my share of great Kurogoma ice cream. This is not one of them. While the matcha tiramisu was too strong, this had the opposite issue and tasted a bit diluted. That is, unless the matcha tiramisu just killed my taste buds before I started eating it. It basically lacked creaminess, and its black sesame flavor was so dialed down that it tasted more like the subtle aftertaste you get after burping instead of an ice cream that's packed with kurogoma flavor, like the ones I've had in places like Asakusa, for example. To wrap it up, Ipudo Berkeley continues Ipudo's tradition of serving delicious ramen thanks to their marriage of excellent noodles and a savory broth that's packed with layers of flavor. The Ipudo buns are definitely worth trying, and the unagi rice was solid as well. The matcha tiramisu and kurogoma ice cream, on the other hand, were underwhelming and could be better. That being said, ramen continues to be king on the Ipudo menu, with the Akamaru Modern in particular delivering wonderful depth of flavor. When it comes to its specialty dish, the latest addition to the growing Ipudo empire delivers. Once again, this is Tabi Asobi. If you'd like to see more videos about geeky exploits like games, travel, or grub, make sure to check the channel regularly. As always, thank you for watching.